Hi guys, it's Dalmar Continue and welcome to our video tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss about classification of computers. So, we have three classification of computers. First is yung classification according to purpose. Then, pangalawa is classification according to types of processing. Then, pangatlo is classification according to capacity. So, first, let's talk about classification according to purpose. So, we have two types. First is yung general purpose computer at saka yung isa is yung special purpose computer. So, general purpose computers are computers that can perform a variety of tasks. So, ibig sabihin, marami siyang kayang gawin. So, marami siyang mga, ano, mga tasks na pwede gawin sa kanya. So, yan yung pumapasok yung kadalasang mga computer na ginagamit natin. So, under siya sa general purpose computer. So, then let's proceed to special purpose computers. So, are computers that are designed to perform a single or a specific task. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung computer na specific or solely dedicated, dedicated lang siya sa task na inassign sa kanya. Example, kung gusto mo magkaroon ng ano, studio, example, mas mabuting mag-dedicate ka ng special purpose computer para sa editing lang or sa video editing, sa image editing or sa video editing lang para mas ma-maximize mo yung mga specs ng computer mo at saka wala na mga distraction so specific yung kanyang purpose na computer so again single or specific task lang yung ano ni purpose niya then we have yung pangalawa nating classification according to types of processing technology or data handled so we have three yung analog computers then digital at saka yung hybrid computer so first analog computer. So, are machines that represent variables or quantities using physical analogies. Analog refers to circuits or numerical values that have a continuous range. So, take note, continuous range. This type of computers is usually used in scientific engineering and process control procedures. So, example, we have analog electric current meter, watch, speedometer, tar, pressure goods, at saka thermometer, etc. So, ito po yung mga example natin. So, ito yung sa electric, uh, sa water meter, electric meter, at saka yung iba pa. So, kung makikita nyo, is ka, halos ka sa parang gear, parang sa relo. Yung mga nakikita natin yung mga gear or at saka yung mga ano, parts niya. So, ito yung mga example ng analog computer natin. So, ito. Then, we have yung digital computers. So, are machines that are specialized in counting. So, digital refers to the process and computers that manipulate binary numbers, zeros, or ones, which represent which switches that are turned on or turned off by electrical current. So, digital computers counts and answer the questions by method how many. So, take note guys, yung si digital computers is ma-answer niya yung how many. So, example, digital electric current meter, digital watch, calculator, Apple, Makitos, etc. So, ito po yung ating example. Yung may mga LCD. So, ito yung, yung sa ating calculator, yung sa ating relo, yung ating bagong digital electric meter, at saka yung sa water meter na mga digital. So, again, it answered how many. Kumpara sa analog na kapag example, may nagtanong sa'yo ng or ano mang oras ba pag tingin mo sa ano mo relo is kapag analog is hahanap-hanapin mo o babasa-basahin mo pa kasi hindi mo ma bigay agad kumpara kay digital na pag tingin mo sa relo is makasasagot mo na oh, time ang time is ano yan kasi madali siyang makasagot ng how many kumpara kay analog na continuous na marami ka pang bibilangin bago mo ma masagot or makuha yung exact value niya kumpara sa Kumpara kay digital na automatic, makakasagot ka agad kasi masasagot niya yung how many. Then, we have yung pangatlo which is yung hybrid computers are machines that combine the measuring capabilities of analog computers at saka yung counting capabilities ng digital computers. So, ibig sabihin, pinagsanib where sa yung ating analog at saka digital computers. So, example, devices used in petrol pump. They are used in the hospitals to measure the heartbeat of patient. Hybrid machines are generally used in scientific applications or in controlling industrial processes. Yan yung ating hybrid computers. 
So, ito yung example. So, wala tayong example na iba kasi kadalasan yung ating mga nakikita is analog at saka yung ating digital computer. So, again, combination siya ng measuring capabilities ng analog at saka yung counting capabilities ng digital computer. So, that is yung under ng ating computers sa pag-handle ng types of processing. No? Yung kanina again is itong, yung ating classification of computers under sa types of purpose now, classification according to types of processing. Now we go to the third one which is yung ating classification according to capacity or size. So we have five types. So first is yung ating microcomputer, pangalawa is yung sa ating si workstation, pangatlo si mini computer, mainframe at saka yung last si super computer. So first, microcomputer. So also called as personal computers or PC are the smallest and least expensive category of general purpose computers. Take note general purpose computer. So are They are typically used in businesses and at home to communicate on computer networks, for word processing, to track finances, and for entertainment. So, yan yung kadalasan nating gamit or kadalasan nating nakikita sa ating mga paligid na ginagamit ng mga tao, which is yung microcomputer or also called personal computer. So, this is the most commonly type of computer in use. So, it is smaller, cheaper, and less powerful than the mainframes and the mini computer. So, in the Mac computer, all the components are integrated in one system known as the system unit. Yan yung ating tinatawag, yung iba tinatawag na CPU. Pakikuha nga ng CPU. Dapat sagutin mo, sir, yung CPU is nasa loob. Nandun sa my motherboard. Hindi CPU yung system unit natin. No, kasi yung System unit, yung ano, is yung system case. So, system unit yan as a whole. Again, no? So, sagutin nyo yung mga magsasabi na, uy, ano yung CPU mo? Yun. Or, pakikuha yung CPU, no? Again, system unit, guys. Then, microcomputer can be classified into two types. We have first yung desktop, yung uh, aking ginagamit ngayon, at saka yung portable, which is yung mga laptop, at saka etc. So, desktop computer, a personal or micro mini computer sufficient to fit on a desk. So, sa lamesa siya or sa mesa or kahit anong mga flat surface. Then, we have portable. The difference is portables can be used while traveling, guys. Traveling, whereas desktop computer cannot be carried around. Unless gusto mong magpack ng ano, system unit, monitor, keyboard, mouse, ilagay mo dyan sa bag mo, which is napakabigat, no? Imagine mo, ilagay mo tapos mag kere kere punta ka sa may puno or travel ka sa ibang lugar, then i-open mo sa may bus. So, kumpara sa portable, is kahit nasa bus ka, pwede ka mag-open ng computer mo. Then, we have different portable computers. So, example, we have yung laptop, pinaka-common. Kung wala kang desktop, pwede ka magkaroon ng laptop kasi portable siya. Then, notebooks, then, mas maliit na version ng laptop. Then, palm top, handheld, Then, wearable computer example, yung ating mga smartwatch, no? At saka, yung ating smartphone is considered rin na computer. Yun yung kadalasan talaga natin ginagamit sa pang-araw-araw na computer, yung smartphone. So, laptop or portable computer complete with integrated screen and keyboard. It is generally smaller in size than a desktop computer and larger than notebook computer. So, with the weight of laptop is around 3 to 5 kilos. So, depende. Mas, mas malaki pa dyan. So, yan yung laptop. Yan yung kadalasan natin ginagamit kung gusto natin mas portable yung computer natin. Ha? While traveling or sa school, pwede natin pasok sa bag. Kung para sa desktop na kailangan ng table or flat surface at saka isaksak mo pa sa kuryente. Kung para sa laptop na kapag merong battery, full yung battery, pwede mo magamit kahit walang kuryente. Then, we have netbooks or notebooks. So, mas maliit kaysa laptop. Pero, mas maliit din, limited din yung sa size ng screen. Kasi, yung advantage ng sa laptop, one of the advantage kasi kung laptop, lalong-lalo na may ano, CD or DVD drive na pwede ka mag-burn doon ng mga CDs. Kung para sa netbook, bibili ka pa ng external CD or DVD drive. So, yun yun. So, smaller screen size, least 
than 12 inches or smaller keyboard size. They are designed to be simple and can be used to perform easy tasks like email, internet browsing, like light entertainment, and light productivity. So, hindi siya pwede sa mas malakihang production or mga tasks. So, pwede siya mga, yung mga gaga, magagaan lang. So, example, mga word processing, pero yung mga editing is hindi siya advisable talaga kasi maglalagyan. Kasi yung mga specs niya is medyo limited lang kumpara sa ating laptop at saka yung desktop. Then, we have palm top, which is nauso nung una. So, they are called the personal digital assistant or PDA. So, these computers are small in size. So, parang ano rin siya, smartphone na ano, may keyboard nung una. So, nauso siya, siya nung unang panahon. So, ngayon, medyo wala na akong nakikita. Ito kasi smartphone na yung mga touchscreen na. So, these computers are not powerful as desktop computers. Then, wearable computers, yung ating sa blood pressure, sa ano ba yan, mga smartwatch na nakakapag-monitor ng sugar natin, yung mga activity natin. So, the size of computer is very small so that it can be worn on the body. So, kahit saan pwede natin, ano, depending kung ano yung gamit niya, it has smaller processing power. It is used in the field of medicine, for example, face maker to correct the heartbeats, insulin meter to find the levels of insulin in the blood. So, yan, ganun yun. So, again, so yan yung ating mga wearable computers. And also, example din natin sa computer, yung portable is yung ating smartphone. Kasi, computer yan yung. So, again, kasi yung definition ng computer is yung electronic data processing device that accepts input para processing data is store natin at saka yung output, which is nasa smartphone na din. Kasi, may ano nga, mga word processing, pwede ka na makapag, ano, sa word or spreadsheet sa smartphone natin. Kumpara nung unang mga panahon pa. Then, we have pangalawa, after ng microcomputer is yung workstation. So, are similar to personal computers, but having greater memory. So, take note, greater memory and more extensive mathematical abilities, and they are connected to other workstation or personal computers to exchange data. So, so naka-network siya, guys. So, workstation are used for tasks that require great deal of number crunching power such as product design and computer animation. So, like on personal computers, more, most workstations are single-user computers. However, workstations are typically linked together to form a local area network. Again, naka-network siya yung workstation. So, although they can also be used as standalone systems. So, pwede siya naka-network or hindi. So, application on workstation is used in engineering application CAD or CAM, then desktop publishing, software development, and other types of application that require moderate amount of computing power and relatively high quality graphics capability. So, ito yung ating example. So, parang nasa call center lang tayo. So, nagtatrabaho dito yung mga ka-worker natin at saka naka-share, naka-network na pwede mong i-share. So, kagaya nung ano, nakapunta ko sa Davao sa Image World at ayun, naka- ano, Tabi-tabi lang sila pero naka-network yung ano, mga computer nila para mas madali na pasapasa yung mga data or yung sa ano ginagawa ng example sa paggawa ng mga yearbook naka-indesign sa so mas madali lang. Then we have yung pangatlo natin after ng workstation is yung ating mini computer. So also called mid-range computers. These computers fall in the gap between micro computer and mainframe computer. So, they possess much more power than microcomputer and perform the same functions as mainframe computers but to a limited extent. So, used in process control, scientific research, and engineering applications. So, it is also multi-user, guys, a multi-user computer and capable of supporting from 4 to about 200 users simultaneously. So, marami siyang pwedeng makagamit sa isang computer lang. So, ano, multi-user o isang server lang. Then, application of mini computers, it is used in university, large business organization to process complex data. It is also used in scientific research, instrumentation system, engineering analysis, industrial process, monitoring, and control. So, ito yung example natin. Then, we have yung pang-apat, is mainframe computer. So, have more memory, speed, and capabilities than 
mini computer natin and are usually shared by multiple users through a series of interconnected computers so mas ma ano mataas or mas marami yung pwedeng makagamit kumpara kay mini computer so capable of supporting hundred hundreds guys or even thousands of users simultaneously kumpara kanina kay mini computer then in some ways mainframes are more powerful than supercomputers because they support more simultaneous programs but supercomputers can execute a single program faster than a mainframe computer so application ng mainframe computer is government credit card processing bank marketing business data processing large organization air traffic control system industrial design so ito po yung example so yan isang server lang marami ang pwede gumamit So, kaso nga lang, yung mga ganito mga setup is hindi pa rin, hindi natin kadalasan nakikita dito sa ano natin area kasi mas mahal yung mga setup. Kaya nga bumibilang lang tayo ng mga yung desktop computer na mga general purpose yung pang personal lang din minilink lang natin kanyang connect kasi mas mura kumpara sa mga ganitong setup is mag i ka talaga ng malaking pera kaya ganun para mas tipid, nagtitipid kasi tapos hindi pa naman kasi masyadong ano sabi natin malaki yung data nila or progressive yung company nila na kailangan na nilang mag-upgrade ng system pero i don't know yung sa mga bangko natin kung ganito na yung gamit na kasi hindi pa ako nakapasok o nakapagtanong sa mga bangko pero iba yung ibang mga lugar o ibang bansa is ganito yung mga gamit nila then we have yung last we have our very own pinakabilis pinakamabilis na Supercomputers so are the most powerful computers in terms of processing power, guys. Processing power. That's considered as the fastest computer. So, it is called supercomputer. So, because it can solve difficult and complex problem within a nanosecond. So, baka nga hindi ka pa nagta-type, may sagot na. No? Malay mo. Or, isang pindot pa, isang letra pa lang, nakasagot na siya. So, the sobrang bilis ng, ano, replenish or processing niya because of their size and expense supercomputers are relatively rare totoo nga yun kasi kaya nga sa ang kasabihan na kung gusto mo mas mabilis kailangan ka mag invest kasi more pa or more speed needs more power or more fuel kung gusto mo more power or more speed you need more fuel so kailangan mo mag invest sa ma mas mataas o mas mahal na mga equipment kagaya ng supercomputer So, application ng supercomputer is used sa forecasting ng weather at saka global climate. So, yung mga pag-asa, yun yung mga gamit nila. Then, use in military research sa mga military defense systems kasi para mas mabilis yung mga calculation, ang mga trajectory, or nasaan na yung sa area nila para mas mabilis or sa bagyo para mas mamonitor. Kung para, baka kasi yung gamit is ano, mumurahin computer, baka abutan pa ng ilang buwan bago mo malamang kung nasaan na yung kalaban mo or yung bagyo or ano ba yung mga gusto mong ipa ano solve ng mga task then in automobile aircraft and spacecraft designing which is very true kasi ginisya nang kasi mas mataas yung kailangan niya sa graphics at saka yung sa ano processing sa processor then use in seismology plasma and nuclear research study in genetic engineering at saka digital film recording yan yung mga gamit ni supercomputer so ito yung example ng supercomputer natin so maraming mga parang mga cabinet na matataas so yung mga ano, processor, yung mga, mga ano, server natin so mga naka-network sila so yan parang kung narinig nyo sa google na sa server is napakarami napakarami para mas mabilis yung example sa pag-retrieve ng data at saka yung performance Then we go to how to buy a computer. So, kasi maraming yung nagtatanong, paano mo, ano ba yung mga dapat i-consider bago tayo bumili ng computer? So, ngayon, ituturo ko sa inyo kung ano yung mga dapat o isa alang-alang kapag bibili tayo ng computer. So, popular desktop brands are Dell, Lenovo, HP, Apple, at saka iba pa. So, always compare the des desktops based on their specification and based on price kasi yung iba ibang brand tapos itong price different different yung presyo nila kasi depende yung sa brand saka yung presyo or sa specs nila 
So, factors to consider. Number one, guys, yung monitor, anong gusto mo kalaki. Operating system or OS, Windows 7, yung Luma, Windows 10, ang gusto mo sa Apple, Macintosh. Then, we have optical drive, CD or DVD, Blu-ray. Sa ating drive, kung gusto mo magsaksak ng CD or DVD or gusto mo mag-burn ng mga movies, ilagay mo sa CD or DVD. Then, memory sa ating RAM para mas makapag-multitasking tayo. Then, hard drive para mas maraming mapasok natin at saka ma-install. Then, CPU or yung ating central processing unit. So, yan yung sa calculation or computation, yung ating processor, the brain of the computer. So, we have monitor guys. So, depende yan kung gusto, anong mong gusto mo. Desktop ba or yung laptop or anong gusto mo. Kaya dapat may consider. Gusto mo mang manood ng mga palabas na gusto mo na parang nasa loob ka na. Di mo pili ka ng napakamalaking ano, LCD. O kung gusto mong maliit lang, kasya lang sa bag, eh, mas pumili ka ng maliit. So, size. Consider natin yung size. So, it is the size of LCD screen. Then, resolution. Then, input. Kasi yung sa input, baka hindi, ka, hindi pwede sa, ano, sa, system, sa gamit mo system unit or sa example gusto mo i-extend baka hindi magkasya kasi naka HDMI or naka VGA then stand baka i-mount lang sa wall or ano may stand ba siya then recommended 24 inch LCD again eh, kayo yung ano dapat ano kung isa lang alang nyo kung ano yung gusto mong experience sa monitor gusto mong malapad o parang isang ano isang pader talaga yung TV mo or yung LCD mo or yung sakto lang may iba nga yung naka-curve then operating system or OS so ito yung ating master servant so siya yung nagmamanage sa ating mga programs then operating system is the main software of the computer as everything will run on it in one form or another so there are prim primarily three choices Windows, Linux at saka yung Apple OS so sa Linux, libre However, people generally do not use it for home purpose o oh, it's very true. Sa school nga natin is hindi natin halos ginagamit o wala tayo nito. No? Kasi mostly mga Windows yung gamit natin. Then Apple OS, Apple is works only sa mga Apple na mga computer desktop or so, sa laptop or kaya, katulad ng kanilang iPhone. Then sa iPhone, iPhone, then, parang same, same brand lang sila gumagana. Kumpara sa example sa Android na kahit ibang mga ano phone manufacturer iba-iba yung oh, same pa rin yung gamit nila sa Android no OS. O at saka sa Windows 7 na kahit iba-ibang yung mga mga manufacturer ng ano board. Then Windows 7 is very popular among the top users which is very true. Kaso nga lang nag-end na yung support ni Microsoft noong January 14, 2020. Kaya vulnerable na siya sa mga ano security threats. Baka mahack o ano ba. Pero anyways, kung hindi ka naman offline, pwede mo gamitin or kapag maingat ka lang. No? Then, Windows 8, no, lumabas to pero hindi masyadong ano, naging sikat yung Windows 10 na ngayon. So, Windows 10 is kasi introduced available in the market. Yung 8, 8.1, then Windows 10. Then, as edition version increases, their feature list and price increases. Tumataas yung version, tumataas yung mga, mga features na then tumataas din yung presyo of course, kaya nga nung sa ating ano, previous topic na yung hardware is one time investment kaso yung sa software ka madadali, kasi palagi kang mag-update, so dadagdag ka na naman ng bayad mo then recommended Windows 7 kasi yung mas ano, friendly tapos hindi mas mabigat kumpara sa Windows din yung mga graphics na yan baka kasi mga luma pa yung gamit natin then saka yung latest version again, depende kung ano yung ano mo, prefer kung gusto mo sa Apple na company or sa gusto mo yung sa Windows na operating system depende kasi yung iba na hindi bago or hindi marunong gumamit kagaya ko wala, hindi ko pa ako nakapa-experience talaga ng sa Apple kasi mas, mostly Windows yung gamit ko then we have optical drive so very optional to kasi kung gusto mo example sa mga ano projects gusto mo i-burn ng features mo instructor or may gusto mo magnegosyo pwede ka mag ano Eh, sa alang-alang mo to optical drive, CD or DVD. So, pwede ka mag-burn ng mga movies, mga songs, ilagay mo sa CD or sa DVD. So, yung iba, yung mga steam unit, meron ng, ano, 
ito or yung iba sa laptop. So, depende rin. May yung iba kasi wala. So, kaya may bili ka ng external CD or DVD drive or optical drive. So, kung gusto mo again mag-burn ka para extra income, baka may mga projects na pwede kang kumita. Then, we have memory o yung sa ating RAM. So, RAM or random access memory is considered as the computer memory as the performance of the computer is directly proportional to its memory and processor. So, sa memory at saka sa CPU. So, today's software and operating system require high memory. So, example, sa Windows 10, I'd, I'd, I'm not sure kung Windows 4 dapat yung mga ano, minimum ata Windows sa ano, 4 gig yung sa Windows 10, 4 gig yung minimum ata na sa RAM. Today, com today commonly used RAM is DDR3, bago, which is may mas bago pa dito, which operates on 1066 MHz. As per Windows 7, 1 gig is minimum RAM required to function properly. Again, ito yung mga requirements. So, makikita mo naman, example, mag, anong gusto mong OS, search mo, may mga, ano, mga minimum requirements yung mga, ano nila, OS, kung ano yung, saan na siya gumagana, anong OS. So, yun, may mga list. So, mas mumuting, search mo muna bago ka bumili kung anong gusto mo para mas mapasok yung mga requirements para gumana. Then, recommended 4 gig. So, 4 gig, we have yung 8 gig, 16, 32, 64, mga overkill. Pero kung yung mga, pwede na, 4, 4 gig to 8 gig, pwede na yun. Kaya, yung mga 2 gig, ginagamit pa rin sa mga editing. Kaso nga lang, ano, medyo lang, yung iba nagka-crash, na responding until mag-crash. Example, yung sa mga editing, yung mga pictures, yung mga high graphics. So, hindi talaga uubra, no? Tapos, ito, isa yung, ano, ito, ito yung dahilan para makapag-multitasking tayo. Kasi maraming, tem marami tayo yung mga program na pwede i-open na ma-temporarily save sa RAM. Kasi yung si RAM, so, kasi ang purpose niya, example, hindi pa tayo nagsisave, temporarily, masisave siya sa kanya. Kapag nag-blackout, hindi natin na-save, totally wala. Mawawala yung ating, ano, yung pinaghirapan. Kasi si RAM is temporary storage na siya. Why hindi mo pa sinave? Yan yung sa main memory kumpara sa secondary storage natin na mas store natin yung memory. As example, sa hard drive o hard disk drive na mas store natin yung data for an extended period of time na kahit mag-blackout as long as na sa loob is hindi siya mawawala kumpara sa ating RAM. Pero again, gamit ito si RAM sa ating example, sa pag-open ng mga maraming tabs. Kung gusto mong maraming tabs ang ma-open mo, mag-invest ka sa ano, mataas din na RAM para hindi mag-crash o mga not responding ba yan. Then, we have hard drive or hard disk drive. So, hard drive is used for storage. Ito yung ating secondary memory. Secondary storage device. So, higher the capacity, more data you can save. So, again, kung gusto mo mas taas yung capacity, mas taas din yung babayaran mo. So, nowadays, computers are equipped with 5 gigabytes hard drive which can be extended to 2 terabytes. Most hard drives in desktop operate at the standard performance speed of 7200 RPM. So, recommended natin na ano, hard drive is 500 gig. Yung iba nga, 250. O ano ba yung mga mas mababa. At yung iba, may mas bago yung ating SSD or sto, solid state drive which is mas mabilis. Kaso nga lang, mas tumataas is mas mahal. No? Yung iba, SSD di may tera. O gusto mo mag, ano, ex, mag bumili ka ng external drive. Again, pero mas mahal. Yung ano, pinakamalaki kong nakita na hard drive at saka yung ano, external drives may natin is 1 terabyte yung nakita ko. Mahal. I don't know magkano na ngayon. Then we have CPU or yung ating central processing unit which is the brain of the computer. So dito nang ano, nangyayari yung mga calculation. So frequency gigahertz, then cores, yung yung mga cores may dual core, may core i3, core i5, core i7, core i9 etcetera. Wala pa. So, or i9 yung ano natin. At saka depende sa ano ma, yung sa processor natin na si, yung sa Intel or sa AMD. Depende. Then brand, Intel, AMD both are equivalent. Intel is and yung pinaka ano natin kasi yung may mga i-series. Then cache. Then recommended Intel Core i3 yung sa akin. Ito is i3. Ano? Core i3. Pero yung ano ko nga, laptop, is pinagamit ko kahit ano naka indesign kahit sa indesign at saka yung mga image editing yung video editing is ano dual core okay naman kaso nga lang naglalag at saka yung nagka-crash depende again kung mas gusto mo talaga na mas 
productive ka, mas mabilis, yung experience mo mas okay is mag-invest ka sa mga higher na RAM at saka yung processor. Then, but the most important, yung pinaka-importante guys is yung tatlo. Yung speed natin, again, yung CPU sa mas mabilis. Kung gusto mas mabilis yung performance, ang instruction, calculation is sa RAM. Capability of computers to perform instruction. So, sa RAM tayo mag-invest. Mas ma laki yung RAM, mas mahal. Example, sa i5, i7, i9, mas mahal yan. Then, sa memory, yung sa RAM natin, pwede tayo mag-invest ng ano, mas mataas pa sa 4, 8, then we have yung 16, 32. Pero, huwag lang mas masyadong overkill. No? Kung gusto mo mga video ito, nung sa image world ako, nakita ko yung specs nila is, yung sa RAM nila is ginagamit nila 8 gig na RAM. Yung kadalasan kasi natin dito is mga ano lang, 4 gig na RAM. Then we have storage area, yung hard drive na ito, hard disk drive is pwede tayong mag-invest ng example, mas malaki para marami tayong mas save at saka may install ng mga program. At saka pwede tayong bumili ng ating external hard drive. Pwede sa ano, pwede tayong gumamit ng sa local disk, pwede tayong gumamit ng SSD para mas mabilis mag-boot, mag-load yung ating mga programs. SSD din, hard drive. Again, kailangan mo mag-invest. Mas mahal din, no? Again, yun yung tatlong dapat natin talagang pinaka-importante yung consider kung ano yung gusto mong kabilis. Yung memory at saka yung sa storage natin. Yung tatlo. Again, depende pa rin yan sa gamit mo. Example, kung gusto mo mag-browsing lang o manood lang ng mga YouTube or mga simple na mga Facebook yung mga simple na mga bagay na gusto mong gawin is, di ka na kailangan mag-invest ng ma mahal o mas malalaki mga specs. So, pwede ka na yun sa mga dual core o mga selero. Pwede ka na yan. Huwag ka na mag ano, overkill na hindi ka nga nag-game hindi ka nga. Kasi kung gaming, kailangan ka mag-invest ng mga high specs sa graphics, sa processor at sa RAM. So, at saka iba pa. Then, kung mga simple lang, again, sa mas mga mura, pwede na. Kasi kung mga video editing, kailangan mo na yung mag-invest ng mga higher specs. So, again, guys, yan yung ating mga importante dapat i-consider or mga factor kapag tayo ay bibili ng computer. So, this ends our lessons. Hope may natutunan po tayong lahat. So, see you sa next video tutorial natin.